the entire country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. What a welcome. Gareth Hughes. Kia ora. Namahinui kia koutou. Kia ora. Kia ora. Well, Mr Speaker, you know it's time for a change of government. Even the government MPs are calling it nine long years. I don't know how many times Alistair Scott in that contribution called it nine long years of national. It felt like nine years just listening to that speech, Mr Speaker. And if viewers wondering why that last member kept looking up, looking up during the speech, he was looking at the clock because after nine long years, there still wasn't anything to fill 10 minutes of a speech with. It was painful to watch him constantly looking up, seeing the clock count down. Now, Mr Speaker, I'm proud to rise and oppose strongly this, the appropriation of supplementary estimates and impress suppliable. For those who mischaracterised the Green Party's position during the budget, that we were supporting the budget, you will see us in this debate voting against the budget. We voted for the pay equity and the tax and working for families threshold changes, but we oppose this budget. We oppose this budget loudly, strongly, passionately, just like we oppose this national government, loudly, strongly, passionately. After nine long years, the environment is still being failed by the government. Our families are still being failed by this government. Our economy is still being failed by this government. Now, you remember this bill we're dealing with today deals with some of the changes we've seen since the 2016 budget. Now, that was called by Stephen Joyce the innovation budget. Now, what we didn't see was actually any much real money for innovation. We simply saw money being moved around in different funding pots and given new names. We saw since then a survey come out, which James Shaw has been speaking about, that fewer businesses are actually undertaking research and development in New Zealand since then. And we're still seeing New Zealand in the bottom half of the developed world for spending on innovation. Okay. In fact, the only innovation that came out of the 2016 budget was how successful National's been at PR gimmicks, at moving money around, at a government that's all about the spin. It's all about the sizzle, not the actual sausage. It's no actual substance within it. And you see it in the other policies and the other issues. So let's take rivers. It's an absolute travesty and indictment of policy that two-thirds of our rivers, our kids risk getting sick if they swim in them. So what did the government do? They simply changed the definition of swimmable so that it looked like they were delivering swimmable rivers. An absolute sham. We can see it on the electric vehicle targets. Here they announced the policy eight different times in eight different locations, announcing a target for electric vehicles, which is actually less than their official do-nothing scenario. You can see it how they kick for touch with these targets, which are literally decades in the future, when none of the current ministers are going to be held accountable, because it's literally decades in the future. So climate change, climate uh, reducing 50% by 2050, in 2050. You can see it with the superannuation changes decades away, and you can see it with Pest Free New Zealand, where literally the target was so far in the future, none of them would be held responsible. This is the real innovation. We're seeing a change in how our government is being run. It's not on substance. It's about these empty targets. It's about the PR spin. It's about these gimmicks. Because in the real world, what we do see as a result of the budget is New Zealand's going from one of the most equal to one of the most unequal countries just across my lifetime. What we see is our children going hungry in New Zealand. Annually, we're seeing 40,000 trips being made to hospital by kids because they're sick as a result of their housing. For 60 years now, we're progressively dropping down those economic rankings, and now we work some of the longest hours for some of the lowest wages and pay some of the highest costs of living in the entire developed world. For 40 years now, we've ex imported more than we've exported, so we have to sell assets to stay afloat, and debt has literally gone through the roof under national. Now, this is exactly what we saw in the recent OECD economic report uh, that came out recently. What they said is any short-term growth that we've seen has been driven by uh, migration, some construction activity, but over the long term, it's being undermined because of our low productivity, the pollution from farming and agriculture, and the high and growing greenhouse gas pollution. So when you look at productivity, the budget had absolutely nothing for it. There was no additional boost in investment in R&D that's actually going to lift us out of the bottom half of the entire developed world, that sees our scientists patent four times less than the OECD average. There was nothing 
over those lo nine long years to boost our productivity as an economy, nothing substantially to move us out from the R&D bottom rank. Now, the Green Party's proposed the idea of a minister for manufacturing, because what we've seen is uh, some huge challenges facing that sector. Why doesn't the government come up with some bold ideas like a minister for manufacturing? The OECD also highlighted the fault of the government through their financial and economic management of protecting the environment. They signalled this out. It is a tragedy that you can't swim in two-thirds of our lowland lakes and streams because they're so uh, polluted as a result of intensive agriculture. So when you look at the budget, there's a trifling amount, $1 million for a new fresh water fund, $80 million for investing or subsidising from the taxpayer intensive agriculture, $1 for cleaning up rivers, $80 for polluting them. You can see it in the same with climate change, where our emissions continue to grow through the roof, our net emissions. We saw a $4 million funding increase regarding climate change. But then we saw a $300 million increase for subsidising polluters under our emissions trading scheme. Just, just stop and think for a sec. $4 million for tackling climate change, but 10 times that amount just in taxpayer subsidies to the fossil fuel industry. $4 million for protecting the climate, 10 times that for increasing pollution. You can see it, $4 million in terms of action for climate change, nearly $10 billion over four years for spending on new roads and motorways, which is simply going to increase pollution. So what you see under national under those nine long years is a continual failure of our environment, failure for our family, increase in poverty, increase in homelessness, and in fact our economy is worse as a result in real terms. But that's why I say it's a real chance for change in a few months' time. Because our vision in New Zealand where you can swim in our pristine rivers and lake and you're not going to get sick, where you can explore our beautiful environment which every New Zealander loves, that defines us in the world, our relationship with nature, where you can still see some of our endangered species in the wild. It's in New Zealand where we say no to poverty. Too many people are in work, in study or on a benefit but are in abject poverty. We can commit to an end to poverty. We can commit to a goal of the right of every New Zealander to have a house. And not only that, a warm, dry house that isn't going to make you sick. A New Zealand where you can live in more livable cities that are pollution-free, where you've got fantastic public transport choices to get around faster and cheaper. A New Zealand with 100% clean energy that's pulling its weight on the world stage. This is the vision of an alternate New Zealand that you could see with the Green Party, because it's the exact contrast what we see after nine long years of national. But the good thing is, after nine long years, change is coming. Richard Tabuton. Uh, thank you, uh, Sarah. It's a pleasure to rise on behalf of New Zealand First to speak.